There are several factors to consider when analyzing a company's day sales outstanding. These include the company's day sales outstanding relative to its industry, trends in the company's day sales outstanding over time, and caveats that can make day sales outstanding misleading. Let's start with industry factors. Day sales outstanding varies considerably across industries. Credit terms that are considered standard in one industry might be unacceptable in another industry. Even within a specific industry, such as companies that make graphics processing units, day sales outstanding can vary a lot across firms. In 2021, for example, day sales outstanding range from 53 for AMD to 38 for Intel. Thus, Intel clearly outperformed its peers when it came to quickly converting receivables to cash. So how did it achieve this? There are several reasons why a company might have a lower day sales outstanding than its competitors. The company has superior credit and collection policies. The company is larger and is using its size to negotiate better credit terms. The company is pursuing a different strategy than its peers or the company is selling its receivables. With respect to operational excellence, a company that has a lower day sales outstanding than its competitors might simply be doing a better job at setting credit terms and collecting payment from customers. I'll talk more about best practices in the next video. But differences in day sales outstanding might also be due to differences in company size. A large company that sells a high volume of product can demand faster payment from customers. Procter & Gamble, for example, sells billions of dollars in consumer products to retailers every year. Thus, Procter & Gamble will have more negotiating power than a smaller rival when it comes to dictating credit terms with customers. Returning to our example of the GPU companies, Intel sales for 2021 were nearly three times as large as Nvidia's sales and almost five times larger than AMD's sales. Thus, Intel generated a lot more revenue than NVIDIA or AMD, and that might explain why Intel was able to achieve a lower day sales outstanding. But another reason companies might have a different day sales outstanding has to do with differences in business strategy. For example, let's say we're comparing two retailers in the same industry. One retailer offers a store credit card, while the other retailer doesn't. The retailer offering the store credit card will likely have a higher day sales outstanding, but it might generate substantial interest revenue to compensate for that. Yet another reason two companies might have a different day sales outstanding has to do with factoring. To raise cash immediately, a company might sell its receivables to a company called a factor. The sale would reduce the company's receivables and therefore reduce day sales outstanding, making it look like the company's customers are paying their bills quickly. But in reality, the company hasn't collected receivables any more quickly. It has simply offloaded the receivables to another party. Now, selling receivables might be a good financing strategy in some situations, so I'm not here to criticize it. I'm just saying it will distort day sales outstanding and make it difficult to analyze long-term trends. For this reason, it's important to add any sold receivables back to accounts receivable when calculating day sales outstanding. Unfortunately, companies don't always disclose how many receivables they sold, so in some cases, you can't make this adjustment. Now that we discussed several reasons that day sales outstanding might differ among firms, let's talk about how to analyze long-term trends. Looking at a company's day sales outstanding over several years can tell you a lot about a firm. For example, if day sales outstanding has increased substantially for five years in a row, the company is clearly having trouble collecting its receivables. This could be because general economic conditions have deteriorated, one or more of the company's main customers is experiencing financial difficulties, the company has relaxed its credit policy to attract new, less creditworthy customers. The company used to sell its receivables but has stopped doing so. Or the company is engaging in aggressive revenue recognition. Let's examine trends in day sales outstanding for Intel, Nvidia, and AMD. You can see that day sales outstanding steadily increased for both Intel and Nvidia from 2012 to 2021. AMD's day sales outstanding was 52 in 2012 and 53 in 2021. So at first glance, it might appear that AMD's day sales outstanding remained relatively stable. However, AMD's day sales outstanding was all over the place from 2012 to 2021. It climbed to 62 in 2015 before dropping to 38 the very next year. So why did AMD's day sales outstanding decrease by 24 days in a single year? The answer? AMD began selling its receivables. In its 10K filing for the 2016 fiscal year, AMD made a disclosure that hadn't appeared in its 10K for the prior year. AMD said, we also enter into sale and factor arrangements from time to time with respect to certain of our accounts receivables. Thus, 
AMD's customers didn't suddenly start paying their bills faster. AMD started selling the receivables to a third party. This was responsible for the dramatic reduction in day sales outstanding. By 2019, AMD's day sales outstanding had increased to 84, so it's possible that AMD later scaled back its policy of selling receivables. Now, because AMD didn't disclose how much of its receivables it sold, it's difficult to compare AMD's day sales outstanding to that of Intel or NVIDIA. But this much is clear. Intel has consistently had a lower day sales outstanding than both NVIDIA and AMD. Now, factoring isn't the only issue that can make analysis difficult. Sometimes day sales outstanding shoots upward because a company relaxed its credit policy or began aggressively recognizing revenue. This is what happened with the company Friedman's, which at one point in time was the third largest jewelry store in the United States. To boost sales, Friedman's relaxed its credit policy and allowed store employees considerable discretion when granting credit. Relaxing the credit policy is a guaranteed way to increase sales, but it comes at a cost, a higher day sales outstanding and higher credit losses. Thus, the question is whether the increased profit from the additional sales outweighs the cost of waiting longer for payment and bearing the risk of higher credit losses. There's a trade-off to be made here, and each company needs to find the right balance. But generally speaking, loosening credit standards is a sign of desperation and should be interpreted as a warning sign for investors. As Howard Schillett once said, sound the alarm when extended payment terms are disclosed and day sales outstanding jumps. Friedman's day sales outstanding steadily increased as the company relaxed its credit policy, but the company eventually went bankrupt after trying to conceal its credit losses. Now, granting easy access to credit isn't the only sketchy behavior that can lead to a higher day sales outstanding. An upward trend might also be the result of channel stuffing, bogus sales, or converting accounts receivable to notes receivable by having customers sign a promissory note. Thus, spotting a trend in day sales outstanding is just part of the process. A deeper analysis seeks to understand why a company's day sales outstanding is trending upward or downward. Ask yourself, has there been a change in economic conditions? Is a key customer encountering cash flow problems? Has the company sold some of its receivables? Has the company changed its credit policy? Or is the company aggressively recognizing revenue or manipulating its accounts receivable? Finally, here are some caveats to bear in mind when analyzing day sales outstanding. First, if you're using quarterly data, make sure to use year-over-year comparisons instead of quarter-over-quarter comparisons if the company's business is seasonal. Second, companies sometimes change the way they calculate sales or accounts receivable, which can distort day sales outstanding, so be on the lookout for that. Third, slow collection of some credit sales might be masked by fast collection of other credit sales. Thus, it's possible for a company to have a low day sales outstanding and yet be experiencing serious problems collecting some of its receivables. This might be difficult to spot because day sales outstanding is calculated using the entire accounts receivable balance, which might include thousands of invoices. For this reason, you should consult an aged accounts receivable report in conjunction with your analysis of day sales outstanding whenever possible. Fourth, companies can almost always benefit from a lower day sales outstanding. But it's possible for day sales outstanding to be too low if the company is overly strict about granting credit and missing out on some sales. An example would be a company that demands all sales be paid for in cash. While that company will never have to worry about credit losses, it will miss out on some sales to competitors who are willing to extend credit. And that's it. In the next video, we'll discuss specific steps that companies can take to reduce their day sales outstanding. In the meantime, if you'd like to receive the PDF guide I used in creating this video, along with a day sales outstanding calculator and spreadsheet, feel free to sign up for my email list using the link in the description section below. You can also receive the PDF guide and spreadsheet immediately by becoming a supporter on Patreon.